enjoying a blustery day on England's south coast in Folkestone, where the Folkestone Triennial, the second of these three yearly exhibitions of art in, uh, in Folkestone, is about to open. And I'm joined on this uh, rather uncomfortable rock by the Folkestone Mermaid, a work by Cornelia Parker. And it's a life cast from a local housewife who seems to be staring intently somewhere towards Belgium. It's already getting really patinated, this bronze, uh, by little flecks of green verdigris. And very soon it'll probably be flecked with uh, something a bit livelier and more incontinent by the local seagulls. Hanging in mid-air in this very beautiful church is this flotilla of fishing smacks and junks and galleons and oil tankers and pleasure boats and fishing smacks, all by the artist Hugh Locke. And they just hang here, being tossed hither and thither and all facing the altar of the church. And it's called For Those in Peril on the Sea and makes you think about migration and journeys and travel and well, well, I'm in the pulpit, so I'd better give some sort of homily about life and uh, how we're all being tossed hither and thither. People worrying about what happens when their loved ones uh, disappear over the horizon. Well, life without a horizon is pretty unthinkable, isn't it? And uh, this one seems to be, I guess you could say they're going nowhere, but uh, they're just holding their place in space rather beautifully. Well, I'm waiting for a train that isn't going to come in uh, Folkestone's old harbour railway station, which is where thousands upon thousands of troops were shipped out to the trenches during the First World War. And until very recently, the Orient Express used to chunder through here, but no more, and the tracks are all rusted. And right on the lines is this sculpture by Paloma Varga Weiss. It's a number of heads sticking out of a structure that looks like it's a uh, some kind of encampment or some kind of house made of cardboard boxes and bits of old timber. It's reminiscent of what Varga Weiss saw in Calais with the homeless refugees who are obviously all trying to make their way across the channel from places like Sangat. Uh, there's also a reference to her dad here. One of these heads is her father who was an emigre to Germany from Hungary. The sculpture is I have to say, quite reminiscent of uh, the work of her ex-companion, the artist Thomas Schutter. Um, but it has a kind of melancholy and loneliness that's entirely her own. This bleak setting with these hopeless and hopeful beings trapped in a box, right on the tracks, going nowhere. I've just clambered through a lot of foliage up a very, very narrow path and found myself amidst even more foliage in a work by the Spanish artist Cristina Iglesias, who's uh, a really good friend of mine and she's been making works a little like this for a long time. You come into this narrow tunnel through a kind of uh, birthing channel, an Alice in Wonderland kind of snaking path. But what it's about is not this, it's about that through the window. We're perched above a moat that's completely overgrown, totally choked with weeds and bamboo, and behind us is this incredible tower, buried, smothered in foliage, and it's only held up by the ivy, which has grown all around it. And it's a bit like this tunnel here is growing all around us too. 
the real art here, of course, is what nature has done to this old tower. And what the work gives us is just a view and this contemplative space from which to look. What the Spanish would call a mirador, a viewing place. <laughs> This impressive bell suspended way above my head on the beach, right by the empty tarmac, the windswept tarmac that was once a fairground in Folkestone, is actually a decommissioned church bell, a 16th century bell from a, a church somewhere in Leicestershire that went out of tune. And when bells go out of tune, they replace them and it lost its clapper and was given a new one by the artist Anna Katrina Dolven. This is the most impressive work by the Norwegian artist I think I've ever seen and it is incredibly dramatic. This bell which the public can just come along and ring isn't just a kind of bell for those who died at sea or bell for the memory of quiet days at the seaside. It seems to be a bell that rings for lost voices not just those that died at sea or disappeared or but lost childhoods. Anna Katrina Dolvin has given the bell its voice again and I find it very dramatic and very beautiful and I feel like Caspar David Friedrich's monk walking by the sea looking at it. Of course I'm just a bloke on the south coast having a day out in Folkestone. <laughs> 